going to spend a little time in the afternoon here working on the chicken composting system and thought I would take folks along for an update. And so that's what this video will be about. A fair bit of chicken TV at the end, but addressing what has become yet again another challenge of just way too much bulk material, way too much compost. I know that seems like a theme or it's been a refrain each year. We have a video, one or two videos that talk about too much compost. And it seems tongue in cheek or, you know, am I bragging that we have so much compost? No, it, it actually is a limiting factor or an issue at certain times. And so right now this chicken uh, winter run, the cattle panel high tunnel in here, we've been bulking out the far end, that's the north end with compost for the last month or so because it's just been brutally cold and snowy. A number of weeks ago, I was sharing an upgrade to the design where I would be taking that bulk material and moving it into a composting bay here and then moving that to this composting bay here. But you can see the reality of the world around us right now is it's been so cold and cold is one thing, but it's the, the deep, deep snow and the snow just keeps coming. Um, what I've learned is that, well, first of all, dumping compost on snow, it gets way more wet than it needs to be and it cools it down so fast that it kind of breaks the whole hot aspect of it in a way that is not very ideal. Under this pile of snow here is a still warm enough compost. Uh, you can see a little bit of a heat vent there. I have a sheet of tarp over it so that less snow melts in. For a little while I was dumping snow on there and all of the snow sliding off of this high tunnel was melting into it, but it, it kind of extinguished it or, or kind of quenched the, the burn, so to speak, of the compost enough that now I would guess it's around 40 or 50 degrees. If I walk on there, it's soft and certainly we can harvest that and use it in the spring, but I don't really have room to add more compost onto it now because they're different ages as well. We've gotten feedback from folks on uh, past videos in this theme of where do we put all this compost of, why not just put it on your garden beds and let it either sit on the snow or melt the snow and this way you're ready in the spring. Well, yeah, where are they? Well, we know underneath all of this, there are garden beds, but the challenge with that pathway, and it's our own fault in that we have just really complex systems here. You look out and you can see all these sticks sticking through the snow. Any one of these given beds may have some openings where we could just dump some unfinished compost and let it mellow and finalize in place. But pretty much everywhere in here, there's random little nursery plants or there's overwintering pockets of carrots or some parsnips we might want to rustle up if the voles haven't eaten them in the spring. So simply dumping it on the garden as a way to move it along, well, we're kind of boxed out of that just from the complexity we're dealing with. There's also the reality that with all of the snow around, the gate itself is pretty hard to open to its fullest extent. You can see we need to move the snow off the driveway, so that's uh, <laughs> a nice mountain over there. And until things really thaw out, our access and flow, being able to actually extract compost from this area, just doesn't seem too easy to do. So I think what I need to do is that far end, the north end over there, you can see it's so hot in there that it's melting all the snow on the sides. Uh, what I need to do is, is modify that, get a lot more carbon introduced into it, and basically see if we can't wait it out. Can we get it to the right ratios that it can cook for the rest of this snowy time? We should hopefully get some thawing in the next week or two. And maybe I just don't have any access on the far side anymore. You can see I'm already, it's about four and a half feet deep there. Not much room between, I can't walk through there anymore, but I guess theoretically, if we get the ratios right, we can just simply build it right up to the top. It's gotten so hot in there that even though we've had temperatures down around eight degrees and 10 degrees at night, um, it's overheating the space enough that I need to actually ventilate on both sides. It's kind of insane. <laughs> Ladies, I hope you really appreciate all the hard work we're doing. Well, we certainly appreciate all the hard work you're doing. And really, every time I build things up, they, they seem to really enjoy kicking it apart. So that whole flow has been great. And fundamentally, I'm not actually complaining. Oh my gosh, why so much compost? But it is a real bottleneck and a real limiting factor. So I guess what I'm sharing here is, um, for those of you designing these systems from scratch, the colder your climate, the more 
depth of snow you have to deal with in the winter landscape, the more this sort of structure, which I think fundamentally I adore the winter run, having this space. If I could start from scratch, I really do think it would need to be a lot bigger or have another one off to the side that we can send this material through. We've been making biochar hard and fast in our wood stove and every few days I dump out another 20 or 30 gallons of beautiful charcoal in our walkway that I can walk on and crush. I've talked about that in the past. And so as much as possible, we're having huge numbers or huge amounts of, of raw absorbent carbon in here. But the food scrap scene, it's actually taken a big uptick recently. We secured another relationship with a restaurant locally and we'll be getting maybe upwards to 40 to 60 more gallons of food scraps per week. So I've got to really get the carbon game bulked up here. So let me get to work a little. Chipping away at the last of Leaf Bag Mountain under Snow Mountain. <laughs> it's insane how much snow we're dealing with. Really neat observation for folks to see. Uh, where there have been all these leaf bags, where this pile was, as cold as this winter has been, once I get down through the leaves and I get low enough, it's, uh, it's moist and it's completely thawed out. It's pretty amazing how much insulation these leaves can offer up. Uh, any snow you see is just from the top that has fallen onto it, but under those bags, I mean, I could have stored all sorts of crops if they were rodent protected. That could have been a root cellar just laid right on the ground with bags of leaves on top for the winter because it is not frozen under there at all. Neat, neat thing to keep track of for the future. As much as I really appreciate all these leaves, they and they've, they've been wonderful, I think at the end of the day the compost is going to be beautiful. That uh, has heavy amounts of these leaves, all the mineral in there, but they do not bulk out and keep aeration and provide as much carbon as wood chips or biochar. I think at this point, if I had my way, I would integrate into this picture in front of us probably 10 yards of wood chips, 20 yards of wood chips folded through this. Now clearly that wouldn't fit in this structure, but um, I can't I can't make a strong enough point about that as m all those leaf bags all of the sawdust all of the wood chips we collect because of the fertility from the chickens and all of the nitrogen richness of these food scraps um, we are just always running out of carbon it's really stunning well anyway let me get this pile built up a bit and bulked out with some leaves before I dig in and we're just blinded by the steam of it all Thought folks, I really appreciate and enjoy seeing this. Thought folks might like to see before I tuck in. Now this is way down low on this pile. So it's hotter way up on the top. And what we find is at the end of the day, uh, the top of this whole pile, all of the hens, especially the oldest hens, will just sit and basically like steam bathe sitting on the top. That gives me a lot of pleasure to see them doing that. I haven't turned it and you can see the steam coming off just from it sitting still.
the most part, as hot and steamy as it is in there, once I open up the pile, it's not that bad uh, air quality wise, except once, once in a little while, I find a little chunk where it was just way heavier on food and not enough leaves or not enough uh, charcoal or wood chips and I can get a real hot whack of ammonia. So I got to duck out of here if that happens. The critical thing about doing this, and, you know, it's like not that wonderful it feels to be in it in that moment, but I have to acknowledge that these hens are spending a lot of their day in here and they're way lower. So down here, when I have my head at their level, it smells just fine, but up at the top where it accumulates, it can be a bit much. So I have to really keep on top of this whole carbon scene. But you can see it's it's just crazy how much heat is build, building up in here. It's a fine line as well with all the seeds we add that have been soaked. They sprout within a day or so in this context and the hens get a lot of them. But if they sit too long in there, uh, it gets hot enough that it actually cooks the seeds and then it's no longer useful to them. It cooks them to the point where they just basically dissolve. So the more turnover, the better. And as crazy as it sounds with all the ice cold insanity out there and all that snow, we have to keep the doors open. The compost is just running way too hot. Weird problems to have. Another strategy I've been working with is when I find pockets that are just insanely hot, I come back out and I look for areas where there's real frozen material mixed with leaves. And so you can see just how much steam is there. I'll put a cap of ice on top, cool it down. <laughs> Feels like a, a surreal state to be doing something like that with, with this sort of winter. One management strategy that I look forward to implementing pretty soon, but it, wait, it needs to wait till uh, things really thaw a little bit, is a huge amount of the material in here, all that heat can be moved into the 14 by 50 foot high tunnel we're building in our neighbor's yard. Until we can get a greenhouse poly skin on there, it doesn't make sense to bring all that heat because it's just gonna get lost to the atmosphere. We kind of have to wait till things get into the 40 to 50 degree range before we can even put the poly on. So backlogs. I'm gonna keep chipping away at adding in way more leaves and charcoal. Maybe we'll go downtown tomorrow with the truck when we collect more food scraps and get a load of wood chips as well. I'd love to hear from you folks, uh, some creative strategies that you have in mind of where some of this material could move while we're still dealing with winter tundra vibe outside. It's a unique problem that we've set up for ourselves. It's an overabundance of what will ultimately be an amazing resource, but in the wrong place at the wrong time, it ends up being quite a challenge management wise. Hopefully for those of you that are setting up systems like this, you've incorporated these, uh, the ideas of these bottlenecks and these limiting factors that we're encountering and you're not experiencing them yourself. Let me know. Uh-huh.